What's going on, wrestling fans? Welcome into Near Falls with D Hall, a wrestling podcast, episode number 71. In today's episode, we are going to be talking about and with a bunch of different college coaches from across the area at the division one, two, and three level. Super excited to release this, guys. Uh, it's been a lot of work, a lot of fun talking to all these different coaches from around the area. Uh, super excited to get into it. But if you haven't already, go back, check out my long form interviews that I released this summer Joe Marquera, Mackenzie McGuire, Ty McGeary, and just recently, uh, Rob Walker, who I just sat down with, episode number 70. That was a lot of fun. Uh, yeah, go back and check out those long form episodes. I really enjoyed having those guys over. And coaches, thank you guys so much for hanging out with me, taking time out of your busy schedule this time of year. I know it's a lot. Um, sitting down and talking about your squad. But yeah, man, a lot of fun. I hope you guys enjoy uh, this edition of the NCAA preview brought to you by Switch Custom Apparel. All right. Joining me now on the call, head coach of Glenville State University, Dylan Cottrell. How are you, sir? Great, man. Great to be here. Uh, ready to ready to talk some Glenville State wrestling, as always, trying to promote our guys, promote our program. And excited about this year. Love it. Love it, man. I can see it in your eyes. Um, second time I've had you on. Super excited to talk to you. Um, first things first, man, I've been talking to a couple uh, coaches tonight and uh, a couple last week. I, I did the started the whole the college interview process. Um, I, they, I, I didn't know that you guys wrestled right on the football field. You guys did an event like that in November. Talk to me about that. That's pretty cool. Yeah, we uh we we've done it the last two years, so um you know named it Battle on the uh, Battle of the Gridiron. Um, so you know the the initial you know thought was just to to coming out of COVID, right? Um, because you know we started that program in COVID, and and um you know we were trying to find ways that uh, one you know when we're talking recruiting, cool stuff to to do with recruits, and also for our guys, right? Like they spent their whole first year, right, right, wrestling and just like small spaces or doing whatever with COVID. So we were like, all right, what can we do that's different? Um, you know, not different, but something maybe on the D2 level that's a little bit different, right? I, I've seen it in Division One and other places. And so, you know, I got with our AD and I was like, you know, what do you think about this? And he was all for it, right? And he was like, this is going to be great, right? And, uh, you know, but like I said, the, the big one is the weather, right? Uh, trying to schedule in November. So, uh, but the teams that we had for it, you know, ahead of hand, they were they were down and they were they were super excited about it. Um, but at the same time, they were perfectly OK with, hey, you know, if it is 40 degrees or, or raining that day, like it's all right. We'll move it inside and do whatever roll so, out in, the gr- in the gym. Right. Yeah. So um, and you know, our facilities are amazing, honestly, for a division, too. Um, so uh, either way, it, it's been great. But, yeah, it's been a great event the, the last two years. Um, it's different for sure. Um, our guys, they, I don't want to say complain, but they, they kind of talk about the, the difference in wrestling out there in the open air. Right. And a lot of times, um, and I'm sure the other coaches might've experienced this too with their guys, but our, our guys legs and, and their win, it, it doesn't feel the same for them. Um, so, so a lot of our guys, right. It, it's, it's definitely different, right. Um, it has to be for the people that are not coming there, right. And doing it for the first time and experience it. Cause uh, I'm sure it is a little bit of a different shock right wrestling outside especially you know a lot of teams do practices and stuff like that but like actually wrestling a live competition outside um so some of our guys right some of our freshmen and stuff were like man that's a lot different than you know, <laughs> no wrestling doubt. at the same gym or wherever it is so uh but no it's it's a cool event right and, it, and it's good right like last year our our president of the university was down there on the front row oh, he almost like was on the mat like about to get kicked out <laughs> like because he was like so excited right so his uh his uh his dad actually was a WVU alumnus as well as a wrestler. So he was down there and, and we had like our VP, our AD right on the football field. So it was a cool event and ties in and um, we do it during the day or, or we have in the past, like during the week. So um, kind of what we do is like our professors um, will, will allow it to like, um, you know, like if they have class during that time, they'll, like they'll allow their kids to go there as long as they go to the match for like extra credit or something. Um, so it brings in a pretty good crowd too. No doubt, no doubt. Okay. Next thing I have for you, uh, as we get in uh, to this off season, who are some of the leaders of the room that you have identified? Well, uh, for us, definitely uh, Gavin Kiocho, right, coming back off a national championship. Um, you know, uh, I think that's a big leap for our program, just for anyone 
um, you know, maybe in our program or even recruits to see, hey, you know, I can go to Columbus State and win a national title, um, you know, and, uh, you know, he did it as a sophomore, right? So two more chances to do it, true sophomore at that. Um, so, you know, he he's a huge one and he's a kid that does everything right. You know, like midterms just came out, like great, amazing grades, right? Like um, he's he student teaches, right? Education major. So he's like doing student teaching on top of it. Um, always, always getting individuals, probably just two or three individuals with either me or coach Andrietta a week. Right. So, um, it's just one of those kids, right. Who does everything right. It's not a super loud, like, you know, rah, rah guy, uh, but someone that you can definitely lead. Right. If we have kids that come in and, and they're like, Hey coach, you know, you know, what, what do you think to go to the next level? I said, you should get Gavin Kiocho's number and be texting him every time he works out. Right. If you want to, you want to win, right. Follow someone else who's winning. Um, so, you know, he's been a great leader for us. Um, you know, we, and we got multiple other guys right in, in the room um, who who have been here, you know, pretty much since the start of it. You know, um, so, you know, that's always nice. Devin Easton coming back at, at 125. You have uh, um, Ethan Hardy, who's been here, a national qualifier. Jordan Williams has been here three years. Um, so, you know, we have a combination of some of those older guys. But um, I'll say, you know, the, our, our program has been kind of a turning wheel of, um, you know, bringing guys in, bringing transfers in, new faces uh, and, you know, plugging in where we have to. Um, and, you know, with the transfer portal, I, I think if you're going to win, right, you kind of have to do that. Um, so, so talk to me about that. And that was my next question. What is your like, how do you build a team? Are you guys predominantly transfer portal guys or you try to build like through high school guys? What's that look like? Uh, to be honest, um, we're, we're definitely probably more transfer. Right. We got like 35 guys on the roster. I would say 20 of them are transfers. Right. Um, we've had a lot of success um, in there, whether it's, you know, maybe a, a little bit part of having a young coaching staff where we can relate to the guys, um, you know, or, or, you know, just being able to sell what we're doing here. Um, but, yeah, we're, we're, we're pretty transfer heavy. You know, uh, at the same time, I'm always really wanting to recruit, you know, good freshmen to to, you know, build that foundation to where the program is kind of a cog in the wheel. Right. And I can just get out of the way. Um, so, you know, w the transfers is more like, you know, we got two seniors graduating and uh, we don't really think someone's ready to, to fill in, to be an all, all American, right. Let's go to the portal and, and plug real quick, right. While we let this other kid uh, mature and we bring in. So, you know, we're, we're always wanting to bring in freshmen. All right. And, and especially West Virginia freshmen, you know, cause we got to recruit the state. Um, it's a great state for G2 wrestling, right? Um, always looking in the Whippeo, right? Always looking in Ohio. Um, so, you know, the don't get me wrong. Now that now that we're, you know, having some more success, we're going out and branching and, and you know, looking at some kids from California and, and Texas, you know, different places. Um, but for the most part, man, we, we just can't spend a whole lot of time looking, you know, that far. We don't have the resources for it either. You know what I mean? Like a flight to bring a kid in from like, the West coast, you know, for a visit for a, maybe, you know, 600, $700 bare minimum. Right. And it's just like division ones can do that. We don't, we don't have that money. Right. Just in the operation budget. So we have to really pick and choose if we're going to, um, if we're going to go kind of far with brain okay. guys. And so we got to make sure that like, it's a real option, you know, that, that we've talked to them and they're like, Hey, you know, you guys are in the top two. Like it's it, it, if if we're bringing in those guys, so you know we're we're trying to stay local. We're trying to do PA, Ohio, West Virginia when we're talking about freshmen. Um, yeah. But I'm always going to look at the transfer portal, right? Uh, nothing against freshmen at all, okay? But like freshmen, you run into they get here, right? What if they get homesick, right? You have more of that, and they want to go home, right? You lose big recruits because of that, or you know they they're just not ready yet, right? You can bring in a guy who's been in a division one program, NAIA program, maybe an all American or someone who hasn't started at division one, they've been there for two years. I don't got to worry about them coming in and being ready and, and trying to, you know, work everything from the ground up. Right. We just tinker a couple of things on how we like them to wrestle. Right. And then we're ready to go. Right. I, I don't got to worry about them in grades. Right. They've been eligible for two, three years. Uh, you know, the freshman, you always got to worry about that first semester with some grades. So it's just a little bit easier. Right. It, it's, it's experience. Um, but at the same time, you know, you got to recruit those freshmen. You got to you got to build that longevity. Right. Um, but I, I, I'm a big fan of the portal. Right. This program would be this program would not be anywhere near what it is if the transfer portal didn't come around. I mean, that's how we got relevant. Right. Got you. So, fast, got you. so fast. Right. Yeah. I mean, hey, there's different ways to go about it. And, uh, you know, that's definitely one of them. No doubt. Yeah, it's always I mean, interesting I to ask I, that question. I, I use my I use my resources with WVU pretty well. I mean, if I had 
probably five division one drop downs from WVU. So, you know, that doesn't hurt to, to keep in that chain and, and get going, you know, so it, it is the, the transfer portal can be great if, if it's used correctly, you know, no doubt, no doubt. Okay. Next uh, couple questions I have for you. Um, as you get those guys in, uh, how do you build that schedule to get these guys ready um, for uh, regionals and nationals at the end of the year? Uh, what well, you know, D two models different because you know you really only got to be good, you know, twice a year, right? Regions and, and so uh, regions and NCA. So uh, you got to make sure that you're getting the guys to the finish. Um, but at the same time, it's a it's a battle for me because I really like our guys to wrestle a lot of matches. We we wrestle a lot more matches than a lot of people do, right? Um, you know, we we have guys last year that had 35, 40 matches, right? And and I like that, right? You can't get better without doing it, right? If you want to get better at wrestling, you got to wrestle. Right. And there's no substitute or simulation that you can do in practice that matches live live matches. You, you can't. Right. So that reaction time's getting better every single time. Our guys are getting less nervous. Right. They, they've been in the deep waters in every position. Um, so, you know, I, I want our guys to have that match load. But at the same time, sometimes it has to go down depending on the person. So I think, you know, when you build that schedule, you build it knowing, hey, we're going to have a lot of matches, and then we can pick and choose on the situation, right? Um, the MEC is pretty cool because we have complete autonomy of our schedule, right? We don't have like the PSAC where we have to wrestle each team. Now, for the most part, you know, we, we do try to schedule each other um, and stuff, you know, throughout the year, but we don't have to, right? So we can put together kind of if our budget allows it, we can put together whatever we want. Um, so we're making sure we're, we're wrestling the best people. We're seeing them, right? And, and for us, I like volume, right? Our guys do too. So, yeah. uh, you know, we try to do that. And then, you know, we wrestle WVU every year. We're wrestling Buffalo November 1st right off the bat, right? So we're, we're sprinkling in those Division ones, um, you know, to, to really get that upper level, right? Win or lose, it, it's great for us because, you know, win situation, we wasn't supposed to do it anyways. That's awesome for the program. That's awesome for morale right? You lose. Um, I can tell you the last two years, the most that we came back after wrestling a match and was able to fix things was after we wrestled West Virginia, right? Because it was, it was the best guys. And we realized, Hey, you know, maybe even our national champ, right? What's he struggling in? Okay. And, and uh, so we need that, right? We need, to, we need our top guys to get pushed and to see, um, you know, not just smacking people. It, it's kind of hard to critique stuff when you're tech calling everybody. Right. But um, so, so we know those need those matches for our, our, our top guys as well. No doubt. Okay, coach, when are wrestle offs and what does that look like for you guys? Do you guys do in house, open house? What's that look like? Yeah, so we're actually doing um, kind of like two events this year. So October 21st and October 28th. So, um, you know, next weekend we do inner squad, right? Which is everybody on our team, they're wrestling um, and, uh, you know, giving everybody a chance. And they're both open to the public, right? And I don't, you know, it's mostly going to be parents or whatever. But, um, you know, next weekend, inner squad, um, everyone wrestles. We take the top two out of that, right, for per weight class, and then we kind of do a mock dual meet on the 28th, right, where the number one and number two wrestle each other. You know, we'll do like the the typical wrestle off, the the blue versus black. You know, our guys will, will get to choose teams and pick captains and do all that, try to have some fun with it. Um, but we do that. But I, I'm not a coach who who's my starters are not off of a wrestle off. You know, I, I don't care who you can beat in our room. You're not wrestling people in our room. You know, those guys wrestle each other every day. You know, they can figure out kind of how to beat each other, keep it close. So, um, you know, we, we've had kids even in this program, right, who have lost wrestle-offs. Um, and, and we start because, you know, when the lights are on and, and everything, they're the ones that shine. And, no doubt. you know, my job is to not be biased and to put the 10 best guys out there at regionals. Um, so that's what I'm going to do. Right. And, and uh, my opinion, a wrestle off in, in houses is not the best way to pick your 10 best wrestlers. Gotcha. Okay. So next thing I have for you, uh, two more questions, any streaming options? Uh, how can we watch you guys? Yeah. So, I mean, just like everything else, MEC, right. The MEC TV is anything that's, um, they do a nice action. job, man. I like watching the stuff on there. Yeah, it's good. It's good uh, quality production. And we're, we're doing new stuff with ours this year. It'll be better, too. So we're going to have somebody on audio this year. We haven't in the past, right? So um, that'll be new for us. They just were talking to us about the other day. Um, our production is trying to do, you know, more, and, and we love that. So, um, you know, we, we got uh, a home invitational on the 4th, which is going to be really nice. We're running five mats, uh, 12 teams, 
you know, Kutztown, Ashland, Seton Hill, us, Fairmont, you know, lots of, lots of solid teams in there. Um, and then, uh, we got two other, uh, you know, home duels throughout the year. Um, but yeah, anything MEC, right. You can catch it on MEC, um, dot TV. Um, and then a, a lot of the bigger tournaments, right. The Midwest and the national duels and all that, that's going to be on your track, track wrestling, flow wrestling, stuff like that. So for the most part, right. If you're trying to watch this, you'll be able to, um, you know, the, uh, the Buffalo match, I think they have their own streaming service. Maybe they use a YouTube and then our West Virginia mm-hmm. match is on ESPN plus. So that's always a cool one to check out as well. Awesome. Okay. Last thing I have for you, anything or anyone you want to shout out before we leave you go? Uh, not really. Just you know, in general, our, our guys and my assistant coach, right? Uh, I, I'll say like our administration, right? Again, it's another year of of people really completely back in Glenville State Wrestling. Um, so, you know, it, it's been awesome. And, uh, you know, our guys are working. You know, we're, we're trying to have fun with it. We're, we're also making sure that we're working harder than everybody else in the country. So, uh, you know, I can't control much as a coach, but I can control shape. All right. So that's a that's a big one. Um, but no, man, just just happy to be here again. Happy to do, you know, what I love to do and, and around such a good group of guys. It's it's awesome. We're going to have a special year. Coach, I appreciate you coming on and hanging out with us. Yeah, for sure. Thanks for having me, man. Always.